Hey everyone. Great to see everyone on this beautiful fall morning. Please take a copy of the bulletin home with you. Lots of good information in there. To begin to note, uh, this month, of course, October is the annual month we designate as Respect Life Month, when we renew our efforts as a church and as a people to support life and all its forms from conception to natural death. As part of that, of course, we have the annual Catholic Charities Baby Goods Drive going on. You can see the box out in the gathering space if you'd like to contribute some items to that to help local families in need. Feel free to do that. Also, we will be focusing, and I will be focusing in the pastor's column in the bulletin on pro-life, in particular, the issue of caring for the sick. That's going to be our special focus as we go through the month together. And especially, I would encourage you to think about pastoral care of the sick in terms of the anointing of the sick. It's an often misunderstood sacrament in our church. I'll be writing more about that in the column there. Please read that. And we will be celebrating a special anointing mass for those who are sick here at all of the masses the weekend of October 21st and 22nd. So if you know someone who is sick who might enjoy celebrating that sacrament and the supportive presence of the community, please encourage them to attend mass that weekend, and we'll celebrate the sacrament with them then. Putting my other hat on for a moment, the Office of the Tribunal and Matrimonial Concerns is hitting the road this October. Every Wednesday in October, we are going to different parts of the diocese to offer presentations on annulments in the Catholic Church and the annulment process. Uh, the show we'll be doing here in Erie will be Wednesday, October 25th at 7 o'clock. It will be right here at St. Boniface. So if you are in need of a marriage annulment in the church or you know someone who might want some information about that, please encourage them to attend that session again. That's Wednesday, October 25th at 7 o'clock. Knights of Columbus are having a pancake breakfast this morning. If you'd like to stop down there and enjoy some good food, good fellowship, and help support the Knights of Columbus and their various projects, please do so after Mass today. Finally, of course, our parish fall festival is fast approaching. That is Sunday, November 5th from 11.30 to 4. A couple items on that. We have our tickets available out at the entrance of the church on your way out today. Please pick up your tickets on the way out. Also, there is a flyer in the bulletin there on the parish festival. So we're asking everyone to please take that. Feel free to make copies of that. It is not copyrighted. You can make as many copies as you like. Share them with your friends. Ask people you know who own businesses maybe to post those. Also, we're encouraging people this year to think about putting, putting this in the window of your car. Maybe the uh, passenger side or the driver's side rear window there where the passenger would sit. Just put that on the window there. That way when you're parked or stopped in traffic, people can see that and just give them some more information about our festival. Please stand and join in our entrance antiphon found on page 209 in the Breaking Bread, page 209. Within your will, O Lord, all things are established, and there is none that can resist your will. 
For you have made all things, the heaven and the earth, and all that is held within the circle of heaven. You are the Lord of heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please join me in reciting the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plants. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry, the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A vine from Egypt you transplanted. You drove away the nations and planted it. It put forth its foliage to the sea. It shoots as far as the river. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Why have you broken down its walls so that every passerby plucks its fruit? 
The boar from the forest lays its waste, and the beasts of the field feed upon it. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine, and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. O Lord, God of hosts, restore us. If your face shine upon us, then we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When the vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the service, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyards to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, The kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Today's parable on the surface might seem like it's pretty easy to understand. Its meaning might seem pretty obvious. In fact, too obvious. And a lot of times, that's the case with parables. But also, a lot of times with parables, what we really have are layers of meaning. And to get to that deepest layer of meaning in today's parable, we really need to figure out what the main twist is at the center of the story. 
To understand that, we really have to have an understanding of the historical context. We have to be experts in first century tenant farming. Do we have any experts in first century tenant farming in the congregation today? Probably not, okay. But probably we've had people in the congregation today who've heard of Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg. Yes? People have heard of this Facebook. Maybe you have a Facebook account. Okay. Maybe we've heard of Steve Jobs and Apple, right? The Apple computer company. Yes? Okay, good. Maybe we've heard of Amazon.com and Jeff Bezos, right? All of these tech companies, these big multi-million, billion dollar tech companies all started out as tech startups. So we probably have a sense of what that's about. So if you allow me a little leeway here, I'd like to update the parable today, telling a little story about a tech startup. There once was a brilliant computer programmer who started the latest and greatest tech startup program. He developed a great product, came up with a great business plan, got a, some nice scenic office space in Seattle. It was all perfect tech startup material. Then he hired the most promising, most brilliant computer programmers to work for him, to develop all the new latest apps and devices, to expand his company. Then he went off on a media tour to promote this new company. When he got back from his tour, he sent his vice presidents to these programmers that he'd hired to see what wonders they'd come up with so that they could take all of the best ideas to market. But the computer programmers wanted to keep all these programs for themselves. So they hacked into the social media accounts of these vice presidents and started posting all sorts of nasty and controversial comments on those social media accounts in those vice presidents' names. So much so that the media outcry was so great, all of those vice presidents got fired. So the owner of the company sent new vice presidents to collect the products. And the programmers treated them in exactly the same way. Finally, the owner of the company decided, I will send my son. They will respect my son. But when the computer programmers heard that the son was coming, they thought, ah, this is the son. This is the one who will inherit the company. We need to go and hack into his social media accounts and get him fired too so that we can take over the company. And so that's what they did. But they didn't realize something. The owner of the company and the son were wise to their scheme. The owner and the company of his son had reached out to and contacted the FBI. And working with the FBI, federal agents had hacked into the son's social media accounts first. So that when the computer programmers hacked into those accounts, the FBI were waiting for them. They got all of their identities and collected so much evidence against them that they went out and arrested all of those programmers and threw them all into prison. <clears throat> then the owner of the company took all of those brilliant new apps and devices that these programmers had been hoarding, and he gave them all to his son. And the son took these and started a whole new tech startup company that grew into such a phenomenon. It was the biggest tech startup since Facebook and attracted all of the most brilliant programmers who were so happy to work for such an amazing company, they gladly offered the owner and the son their services. Then, from prison, the, the faithless programmers finally respected the son. So what was the twist? Where's the big twist in that story? The unexpected turn of events. <coughs> that the owner knew that they would reject his son all along. In fact, that was crucial to his plan. And that takes us to that next level of meaning. What's the deeper meaning behind this parable? Is that the plan from the owner, the plan from the landowner, is that he's going to build a new vineyard, bigger and better than the first. And he's going to fill it full of faithful servants. And key to that is the son and the rejection of the son, the cornerstone, the stone that was rejected that became the cornerstone of this new vineyard. Now, we don't have to have much imagination to realize who's who in this parable. Clearly, the landowner is God the Father, who creates everything 
and generously shares it with his creatures. Clearly, the Son is the Son of God, the Son of the Father, Jesus Christ, whom the Father sends into his creation to be the cornerstone of his new vineyard, a new heaven and a new earth. The only real question we have is, who are the tenants? Or maybe more importantly, which tenants are we? Are we the faithless tenants who hoard all of the gifts that God has given us and do not give him his due? Or are we the faithful tenants who are part of that new vineyard, who gladly offer our faithful service to our loving Father? We have to think about in our lives. Think about that question in your life. And think carefully about your answer, because on it will depend whether or not we are in the new vineyard of our God. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things as it belongs to me. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God of the Father, born of the Father, and full of our objects, God, God, and 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 for us, we have the salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and brought to back. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the world, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the Lord, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son has adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Gathering our prayers together, we offer them to our Heavenly Father, who we know hears us and answers us. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, our Bishop Lawrence, our Pastor Mark, and all leaders in our church, that they may be encouraged by the Spirit as they teach all people the good news, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That the prayer and worship of the church may inspire her members to live through their faith more fully each day, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer that Christians everywhere will embrace their call to seek greater justice in our world where the life and dignity of the born and unborn are respected and de defended. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. That more young men and women will hear and answer their call to the priesthood and religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For the prayers spoken and unspoken in our hearts, and for all the youth in our parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in our families, parishioners, and friends, and for living and deceased members of our parish, for whom we remember in a special way at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, giver of all gifts, we thank you in a special way today for your Son, who is the cornerstone of the new and more fruitful vineyard. We ask you to help us respond generously your, to your call to be servants in your vineyard through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise of the Lord Jesus Christ, for our O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until we come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The 
Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not wish to turn to you. I don't want to say the word of the Lord.
Blood Christ. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.